like Gothamites, if you're new here, hi! <laughs> I'm London, aka History of the Batman. So one of my favorite short series that I have been reading lately is Brian Azzarello and Lee Bermijo's Batman Damned, which is part of DC Comics Black Label, which is an imprint within DC Comics that presents more mature content within their comic books. Because there were several criticisms within the first two books of Batman Damned, in particular book number one showing Batman's genitals, which started an uproar and some fans just wanted a comic book and not an issue of Playboy or the male equivalent for Playboy. I am not sure. I am not knowledgeable within the world or pornographic book, so... <laughs> and other controversial things surrounding the book made the production of this Black Label publication come to a halt. But thankfully, Batman Damned Issue 3 will be out this month on the 26th, which I am so excited to read. But this whole almost canceling the book fiasco made me want to talk about Batman-centric books that almost suffered, or did suffer, the same fate, whether in the past or even currently. So for this video, I am highlighting Batman comic books or comic book covers that were either solicited by DC Comics but never hit comic book stands, were in the middle of its run but never received a fitting conclusion, or were fully released but received so much backlash that DC Comics decided to pull the book out altogether. And overall, I want you to wonder how these books would have affected the Batman mythology if they were published, and what this says about the power of fans and critics when it comes to the creative process of producing these books about the Dark Knight. But before we get into canceling culture, why don't you subscribe to this channel and become a part of this wonderful Gothamite community. Our first book we're talking about is The Joker Issue 10, which was supposed to come out in 1976. Now, as you may or may not know, the 1970s was a major transformative period for the Batman, who returned to his darker and more gothic roots that Bill Finger and Bob Kane presented within the 1940s, separating his campy exterior popularized by the Silver Age Batman TV series. And the Joker even returns as a murdering maniac in Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams' now iconic book, Batman 251, which holds the story Joker's five-way revenge. Of course, the Clown Prince of Crime was so popular, especially after his chaotic return, that he even received his own self-titled publication in 1975. Called The Joker, there are several fun concepts about this book. One, Batman doesn't appear in any of the issues. It is solely focused on Joker. And two, most of these stories have Joker trying to stop other Batman and villains from committing crimes, but then somehow ends up back in Arkham Asylum along with these criminals, and then of course Joker breaks out as usual, because Arkham just sucks with security. And how fun would a book be if Joker was just in Arkham Asylum the entire time? Although Joker was incredibly popular in the mid-70s, this publication only lasted nine issues. However, it was supposed to go for 10 issues. According to the very dope website 13th Dimension, they have awesome interviews and things like that, so you should just check it out. Writer Martin Pasco actually wrote a story with the Joker going up against the Justice League, which would have been called 99 and 99 out of 100% dead. And that was going to be the Joker issue 10. But it was canceled and the book was scraped after issue 9. But what is a trip to me is that in the late 80s, DC editor Julia Schwartz claimed that this story was never even written or never even discussed. Like this story that Pasco wrote about the Joker in Justice League, it didn't exist. However, this story was discovered years later, and DC Comics actually announced late last year that Pasco's The Joker number 10 would be included in the Joker Bronze Age omnibus book that is coming out this August for just $99, which if you think about it, that's a pretty good price considering all of the stories that you're gonna get. So personally, I am excited to read this long lost Joker story and I'm very glad that it is coming to the surface even though it took several decades to come back into the DC Comics rotation. But it just would have been great if it was originally published in 1976 as it was intended. Our next story is Batman Dark Detective 3. Since we're discussing fun books from the 1970s, it is fitting that we do discuss Steve Englehart and Marshall Rogers' Batman Dark Detective 3. In the late 1970s, Englehart, Rogers, and 
and Walt Simonson turned an already popular DC Comics hero into a more third dimensional character within the now iconic series Batman Strange Apparitions. A huge inspiration for not just the development of Bruce Wayne and Batman's dual identity, but also for future animated TV episodes and live action films. Strange Apparitions introduces characters such as Rupert Thorne, the awesome love interest Silver Saint Cloud, and even stories such as The Laughing Fish, which was originally in Detective Comics 475 and is now one of the best Joker stories of all time. Between Batman's thrilling adventures in Gotham, fighting villains such as Dr. Phosphorus, to dealing with his now very serious girlfriend Silver St. Cloud and her actually realizing that Bruce Wayne and Batman are one and the same and having to break up with him because of that. Englehart's series really for the first time within Batman's mythos presents the idea that the true cow that Batman dons is the persona of Bruce Wayne and not the other way around. Steve Englehart and Rogers return decades later courtesy of DC Comics request with Batman Dark Detective which was a six issue miniseries that came out in 2000 this story brought back the lovely Silver Saint Clown and even a more unhinged Joker. Even more unhinged than in The Laughing Fish and Signs of the Joker. Sadly, Marshall Rogers passed away in March of 2007. But before he passed away, Englehart and Rogers actually did a third Dark Detective series, which involved Bruce Wayne's struggle dealing with his relationship with Silver St. Cloud and an ancient being introduced within this Dark Detective narrative, who was called Dalla the Vampire, who was dealing with the struggles of their own humanity. However, even though this six issue series was finished, DC decided not to publish Dark Detective 3. And if you read Steve Englehart's viewpoint about this topic on his website, which I'll put in the description below, it just seems like a whole bunch of really juicy gossip and some shadiness going on. But that is just my observation from what Englehart said. I actually had a podcast episode in 2017 with Steve Englehart that I'll put in the description. And he does talk a little bit about his Dark Detective series and kind of how he was involved in certain projects projects such as 1989's Batman and it just really didn't go well. So if you want to check that out, I'll put it in the description. And the bulk of that is that the basis for Dark Detective 3 is actually within the films of The Dark Knight and a little bit of The Dark Knight Rises. And unfortunately, Batman Dark Detective 3 will not be put out in a trade paperback now or in the future by DC Comics, which is very unfortunate because a, Marshall Rogers' art is incredible and it would have been a great testament to celebrate his work after his passing and Steve Englehart is an amazing writer and Dark Detective is just a great art. However, if you do go to Steve Englehart's website, he is selling the scripts for Dark Detective 3 or copies of the scripts. So if you are interested in it, you actually go to his website and check those out. The art isn't for sale, but the actual scripts are. So if you are curious and you do like Dark Detective, I would suggest checking those out. Okay, our next is Holy Terror Batman from 2006. I have a reason for saying it that way, like I promise. Not to be confused with Alan Brennan's Elseworlds story, Batman Holy Terror, which fun fact, that Elseworld is the first Elseworlds book to actually have the official logo on it. But of course, the first official Elseworlds is Batman Gotham by Gaslight. Holy terror, Batman! <laughs> and I say that because literally Frank Miller said it is supposed to be said within the Burt Ward's Robin Batman 66 way. Like, holy whatever, Batman. Literally, that's how it's supposed to be read. I'm not just making fun, so... There you go. <laughs> so Holy Terror Batman was a Frank Miller project. But of course, you know, Frank Miller is the writer who penned Batman The Dark Knight Returns and Batman Year One and other books. And Holy Terror Batman was going to be released in 2006. It was going to be a 120 plus page graphic novel. And according to different sources such as the BBC News and the Daily Telegraph, Miller was going to have Batman fight Al-Qaeda. <laughs> and it was going to be a very propaganda styled graphic novel novel. I mean, even at one point in an interview, Frank Miller said Batman is going to be kicking the ass of Al-Qaeda. That is a real quote. I promise you. 
Ew. And of course, Frank Miller reassured that this is based off of the terrorist attacks that happened here in the United States on 9-11. But after still working on Holy Terror Batman <laughs> for about a year, in 2007, Frank Miller started to say that he didn't really see that this book was going to be a Batman book. As he was writing it, he didn't think that he should be the central protagonist. And then by 2010, Frank Miller said that he just wasn't working on this Batman book anymore. But then a year later at San Diego Comic Con in 2011, Frank Miller did announce that Holy Terror was going to come out, but Batman was not the protagonist and it was going to be a new character that he created called The Fixer and it was not going to be published under DC Comics but under Legendary Comics. And later that year, Holy Terror by Miller was published under Legendary Comics but had absolutely nothing to do with Batman. So I'm not sure if you would want to see Batman fight Al-Qaeda and Islamic terrorism. I'm not sure if that would interest you, but Frank Miller was on that track for over a year and I am so curious how the reaction of fans and different critics would have been if this book actually was published and it was a Batman-centric story. But we'll never know now, so... Ooh! Our next one is All-Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder from 2005. And you know if you have watched any of my videos, if you have followed me on History of the Batman on Instagram for years, you know that this is my guilty pleasure. <laughs> and this next one is actually a Frank Miller book that he actually wrote that was centered around Batman. Awesome! So just a very short background. All-Star Batman was going to be under the new DC imprint called All-Star, which featured very iconic DC Comics heroes and characters and retold their backgrounds. And probably the most successful out of this very short-lived imprint is Grant Morrison's All-Star Superman, which was made into an animated film if All-Star Superman sounds familiar to you. So within this imprint, we have All-Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder, which was written by Frank Miller and illustrated by Jim Lee, and was within Frank Miller Dark Knight universe. So as the All-Star imprint wanted to do, this story was actually a retelling of Dick Grayson becoming the first Robin the Boy Wonder. However, that is not what this book is remembered for. This Batman is a satirical extreme version of what the Batman persona has been for decades and decades. He is presented as a crass, violent and very inappropriate Dark Knight and is even dubbed the goddamn Batman. And I love it so much. <laughs> anyway, All-Star Batman's very sporadic publishing of 10 issues between 2005 and 2008 was one of the huge reasons why this book was never completed. Because if you read issue 10, it is not a conclusion. It is not the end of the story. And to add insult to injury, the all-star imprint just went away. It was scraped completely. And it took two years for Frank Miller and Jim Lee to say that yes, they are going to complete this story, but it is going to be in a six-issue miniseries called Dark Knight Boy Wonder that would actually complete all-star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder. However, that series never even happened and has not been published by DC. And so all we have is All-Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder issues 1 through 10. While some Batman fans are so glad that All-Star Batman was pretty much cut within its prime, fans like myself are kind of bummed that it did end shortly. And I really wanted to see the conclusion of this insane interpretation of the Caped Crusader. But speaking of the All-Star imprint, I did want to throw in a short cancellation and that is All-Star Batgirl, which was supposed to come out in 2006. And I really wish it wasn't canceled because it is about my heart and soul, Barbara Gordon. This book was announced in 2006 and it was going to be written by Jeff Johns, who wrote Flashpoint, and J.G. Jones, who illustrated Final Crisis, already an amazing creative team. And the story would be about Babs' transformation into Batgirl and have some type of mysterious connection to Arkham Asylum, which Arkham Asylum, I love stories about Arkham Asylum, like Grant Morrison and Dave McKean's A Serious House on Serious Earth, it's one of my favorite books of all time. Anything that talks about Arkham and focuses on it is such an interesting and fascinating look into the world of Batman and to his villains and to the psyche of all of these characters. So the fact that they were going to have a Batgirl Arkham book, 
I really would have loved to read it. <laughs> but unfortunately, because the All-Star imprint is scraped, that book will probably never see the light of day within DC Comics, which is such a bummer. Okay, our next one is probably one of the most well-known, canceled, or abruptly ended DC Comics books of the modern era that fans still to this day want an ending for, and that is Kevin Smith and Walt Flanagan's Batman The Widening Gyre, which originally came out in 2010. Of course, this series is most memorable for the reconciliation between Bruce Wayne and, once again, Silver St. Cloud, and Bruce Wayne actually not only asking Silver St. Cloud to marry him, but telling him that he is Batman and exposing his secret life to her because he really loves her that much and wants her to be a part of all of his endeavors within his world. And of course, Silver St. Cloud says yes! And since issue 6 was the last issue within this series, all of this happened and at the very end, on the last page, the character who was helping Batman in different issues within the Widening Gyre turned out to be the villain Automatopoeia, who was created by Kevin Smith in the first series he did with Walt Flanagan, and he... <laughs> And Automatopoeia slits Silver St. Cloud's throat and kills her. And that is how the book ends. And not only that, that's how the series ends. There was no other issue after that. That is on the last page. That's it. Because The Widening Geyer was supposed to be a 12-issue series. And it ended in issue 6. The main reason that Kevin Smith's The Widening Geyer came to a halt after issue 6 is because the beginning of the AMC show Comic Book Men, which starred Kevin Smith, happened and between production and scheduling issues, the publication just wasn't happening. And Kevin Smith did say out loud <laughs> that he was going to complete The Widening Geyer and give the other six issues in a series called Batman Bellicosity, which was supposed to come out in 2014. It is 2019, and did you see it? No, because it never happens. DC never published it. It was never put out into print. Is that the gardener? Ah, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I am telling you, even this, this tweet right here, I got it just a few days ago, and someone was like, I really wish that the Widening Geyer would have been finished, and I've even written it to Kevin Smith to ask him to please finish it. Like, I'm not joking. To wrap that one up, <laughs> The Widening Geyer is now considered by many fans to have one of the worst Batman cliffhangers in comics of all time. And there have even been fans who have created videos or written articles that have said that this is one of the worst Batman singular comic books ever. <laughs> and that could be for many different reasons, probably mostly because Silver St. Cloud dies in such a horrific way that was completely unnecessary and it's just a mess. <laughs> so Kevin Smith, I just want you to know, fans really want you to finish The Widening Guy in any way, even if it's just a one-off issue that just kind of ties everything together. If you just tell us how Bruce feels after seeing his fiance get killed in such a way, like just, I am really sorry about the background, but I don't... I don't know what to do. <laughs> okay, this next one I put on the list because not only was it really controversial, but it pissed me off. So here's the story. So back in 2015, the Joker was celebrating his 75th anniversary since his debut in 1940's Batman issue number one. I'm so bummed out that like this gardening is just making recording the end of this video so difficult. <laughs> Like, it really bums me out. <laughs> like with many major characters' anniversaries, DC Comics for their publications provided variant covers that surrounded the celebration of the Clown Prince of Crime. One of the variants was Batman issue 41 by Raphael Albuquerque, which paid homage to Alan Moore and Brian Bowen's 1988 one-shot graphic novel, Batman the Killing Joke. If you aren't familiar, which if you have watched this channel you are, in this book, the Joker shoots Barbara Gordon, aka Batgirl, paralyzing her from the waist down. And because of this, 
Babs has to retire as Batgirl, but ultimately she becomes the awesome Persona Oracle until 2011's The New 52, which is the DC Comics soft reboot, and Barbara Gordon once again becomes Batgirl. Albuquerque's variant cover, which is right here, shows the Joker's drawing a bloody smile across Batgirl's very grim face while holding a gun with his arm around her shoulder, which is obviously alluding to Bab's tragic past that was presented within Moore's graphic novel. Gardner kind of went away, so we're literally going to just power through and finish this. <laughs> Once Raphael Albuquerque's variant cover hit the internet and DC Comics presented it, the internet was outraged. Starting the hashtag change the cover, some said it was insensitive to the tragic event in Alan Moore's book, glorified sexual assault, and took away the strong female persona of Barbara Gordon's Batgirl that had been presented within this particular run of the Batgirl publication. Because of the immediate backlash, it wasn't just DC, it was actually Raphael Albuquerque himself that issued an apology if this cover that he created hurt so many fans and he wanted the variant pulled and DC Comics complied and the variant cover was never published. Now, if you have watched any of my videos or have followed History of the Batman on Instagram over the last six and a half years, you know that I absolutely love Batman the Killing Joke. It is literally one of my favorite graphic novels of all time for several different reasons. And yes, Babs getting shot by the Joker is one of the most horrific and tragic moments in Batman's entire 80 year history and in DC Comics history. I completely agree with this. However, it is still part of Batman, Joker, and Barbara Gordon's history. Bad and good things happen in history in any history. And if you are commemorating the 75th anniversary of a character, you are including all of it. The good and the bad, including Joker's horrific crime against Barbara Gordon, Commissioner Gordon, everyone that he has wronged in the past, Jason Todd, everybody. You are talking about all of it because it all is encompassed within his 75 year mythos. It is part of what makes him the clown prince of crime, the harlequin of hate. And so I really think that Albuquerque's cover was actually highlighting this very important book within Joker's history. Of course, when the cover was pulled and I wasn't able to, <laughs> to buy it, I was extremely, extremely bummed that a hashtag completely ruined this artistic expression of a part of Joker's history. Because of this, I actually wore this button today. I don't know if you can see it because glare and stuff, but this button, oh yeah, the glare, oh there it is, okay. So this button is basically the cover. And when the book was canceled, this awesome group called The Realm Cast, who have a very fun podcast and they're on Instagram, check out their stuff, I'll put it in the description below. They actually made these buttons and were selling them. And when I first saw it, I was like, oh my goodness, I need a button. And they gave me several buttons and I even gave away some buttons to Gothamites in a giveaway. I mean, I was so bummed out that this cover was canceled because the art is stunning. It commemorates a huge part of Joker's history and yeah. <laughs> this variant cover was canceled by DC. It was never published officially and I think it is very unfortunate. Yes, it was controversial, but sometimes history is controversial and you have to highlight it. That's just my two cents. <laughs> now the last couple of canceled Batman books that we're gonna cover in this video are very, very recent. But I think that a lot of fans at this point are really upset at their cancellation. One is Detective Comics 80th anniversary before Batman. Now of course we know that Batman debuted in Detective Comics issue 27 in 1939. Well I know people don't really realize this, but Detective Comics existed before Batman. <laughs> Issues one through 26 existed and they had their own stories and they are awesome. Well, DC Comics did announce earlier this year that they were going to do a box set that reprinted for the first time Detective Comics issues 1 through 26 before Batman and highlighted the stories and the characters before the Cape Crusader basically redefined Detective Comics. But even if Batman wasn't a part of Detective Comics, that publication alone is 
a historic piece of American comic book history. So I was very, very excited to purchase this two volume set. However, back in March, DC Comics announced that they are canceling the publication of this series and they don't know when it's going to come back and it may not come back. And the last one that is canceled is the Batman Hush Saga Omnibus. Now back in March, DC Comics announced that this was actually going to be canceled as well and they weren't sure if it was going to be put out later this year or even at all. Now this omnibus actually is going to collect the stories that highlight the character of Thomas Elliot aka Hush. Now, I just did a video, <laughs> my five bat essentials under five minutes about Hush. And a lot of those stories, well, most, if not all of those stories, are within this Batman Hush omnibus, plus many, many more. So I'm gonna put that video in the description if you're like, oh, I really wanted the omnibus, but I do wanna learn about Hush, I got you. People have talked to me on Twitter and on Instagram, they're like, do you know when the omnibus is coming out? I'm so upset that it was canceled. I really, really wanted it. I don't know if it's gonna come out later this year or at all, and DC hasn't really put out a statement saying when it was going to come back out. So hopefully we'll get an update on that. You never know, we might get it later this year. Fingers crossed. <laughs> so with all of these Batman stories that were either cut short or never made it to the comic book stands, you do have to wonder how they would have been received by fans and critics and how it would have added to the already fascinating history of the Batman. But hey, for some of these stories we just may find out. Like Joker number 10, which is coming out in August and I will be buying that book. I'm so excited because that Joker series is great. <laughs> so at least we get that. But hopefully these other Batman stories that we discuss will have a conclusion and a fitting end that will make fans happy. Thank you so much for watching this video about very controversial or popular Batman books that got canceled by DC Comics. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a bat, a bat, a bat, thumbs up. As always, all of my social media is linked in the description below, including Instagram at History of the Batman. So why don't you give it a follow and become a Gothamite? Check out my videos for a DC Comics DC Fans channel. And also, I will be doing another five Bat Essentials under five minutes video this week. And if you have a character or an aspect within Batman's mythology that you want five essential storylines about, please let me know in the comments below because I will do them. Some people have already given me awesome suggestions and I am doing those as we speak. So please let me know who or what you would like to learn about. It's really important to me. Oh, and also, please subscribe to this channel so you can become a part of this Batman community. It would mean so much to me. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will have more History of the Batman soon right here on YouTube. Remember Gothamites, all about peace, love, and Batman. Bye.